Welcome to the Advanced Geekery Project Lab where I'm testing 3D printers for your entertainment and edification. Today we're looking at the Anycubic Cobra 3 Combo, an inexpensive full color printer that has some history. My name is David Gewertz. Welcome back to Advanced Geekery. Let's get to the juicy bits right away. At under $300 for a color printer and a filament dryer, this is a very inexpensive printer. But it's taken almost six months to get the review out because it's required a couple of rounds of major surgery before I could get it working right. This program is sponsored in part by the Advanced Geekery Weekly Newsletter. Want exclusive access to my latest ZDNet articles, behind the scenes updates on my projects, and must watch YouTube videos curated just for you? How about fascinating reads from around the web and a chance to have your own projects spotlighted? It's all in the newsletter. And the best part, subscribing is absolutely free. Don't wait, click the link below to get your weekly issue and make it awesome. Here's how this review is going to work. Most 3D printers have a lot to like, but they also include their fair share of head scratchers and genuine annoyances. As I go through the review, I'll be giving everything I like a good, everything that's just plain odd a rating of weird, and everything that I don't like a point for ugly. Think of weird as a measure of what were they thinking and ugly as a measure of uh-oh, that's bad. Let's get started. The Cobra 3 is an FDM fused deposition modeling 3D printer, which means it uses melted extruded filament to build objects layer by layer, eventually. I'm going to tell you about the challenges of getting this thing working, but please stay to the end because I have some astonishingly gorgeous prints to show you. As shipped, the entire printer itself was pre-assembled. There was none of the typical bed slinger juggling required to add the gantry. The gantry came fully attached to the bed out of the box. The only thing that needed to be added was the printhead. Ease of setting up the basic printer earns the Cobra its first good. There's an unboxing video you can watch that shows how this came together. At 250 by 250 by 260, the build plate is a reasonable size. It's roughly the same size as the Bamboo Lab A1 combo, but almost $300 less expensive. Also included was the Anycubic Ace unit, the four color printing module. The module itself came pre-assembled, but you have to run four PFT tubes between the color unit and the printer. Creality and Bamboo have essentially the same printing modules, but they only require one PTFT tube because the filament switching occurs at the module rather than at the printer. I'm going to give this printer its first ugly because removing the little blue horseshoe connectors that secured the tubes was a righteous nightmare. Also, the printer winds up with this very cluttered feel of all these cables, there's a set of video I'll link to that shows these challenges. And that brings me to the printer's first weird. For some reason, the control cable for the ACE unit has to route around the side and plug in at the front. Why? At this point, the printer was effectively set up. I printed a few test prints that came on the USB stick and tried to move on with additional testing. Tried. It's at this point that we begin our slicer saga. Current 3D printer manufacturers have some sort of delusion about their slicers. They're all using some variant of Cura and or Orca slicer, yet for some reason they have to put their own skin on top of these working open source slicers and then break them. When I first got the Cobra 3, the only slicer supported on the Mac was an older Anycubic slicer. It was clunky, but it mostly worked. The slicer that Anycubic calls Anycubic Slicer Next is the Orca derived version, but that didn't support remotely sending an object to the printer when I got it. As it turned out, nothing supported sending an object to my printer, even after I spent hours and hours trying every combination possible. When I reached out to Anycubic support, they told me I would need to replace the motherboard. Once the board reached me from China, a wait of almost two months, I spent a couple of very fiddly hours replacing it. Very, very fiddly. Ugly. And yes, you can watch a video about doing that work as well. I managed to print a few things, and then I could no longer load filament into the hot end. While I could slide a test probe through the hot end, filament, which is slightly larger in diameter than the test probe, would not go through. So something was misaligned inside the hot end. This time when I reached out to any cubic support, I got no response. I tried a few times over the course of another month. After digging around on Amazon, I found a $15 hot end replacement kit and decided to just buy it in order to move this process forward. 
I'm giving Anycubic another ugly because the support team never responded to my ticket. Even though the vendor pitched the new hot end as original Cobra 3, the new unit didn't fit perfectly well inside the plastic covering of the heated subsystem. But a little blue tape solved the problem. That's literally ugly. Finally, I could print. Anycubic Slicer Next had been updated by this time to print across the network, although the print status page still showed its results in Chinese. A month or so later, that page now shows as English with the rest of the software. The color touchscreen is nicely responsive. That gets a good. And the price, at under $300, that's a definite good. Another good is the fact that this color module is also a filament dryer. These things run about 100 bucks on up, so for $300 you get a printer, the color module, and a filament dryer. This printer is under $300 and also includes a filament runout sensor, a power fail resume feature, and an automatic bed leveling. I'm going to give it a good, 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 one for each feature. I'm also going to give it a final good, which is for print quality. And with that, let's move on to some actual printing. The Cobra 3 combo is not my first multicolor printer. That goes back about seven years to the Ultimaker 3. But since the Cobra 3 arrived here before the Bamboo Labs X1 combo, it is my first of these quad filament feeder styles. Having four filaments already loaded in a printer is very convenient. I don't do as much four color printing on the Bamboo Labs than I do individual color printing, but choose one of the four colors to print in. They're the regular colors I usually use, and without having to swap filaments, I really like that. I do the same thing with this, although I've been doing more of this fancy color printing with the, uh, with the Cobra 3 than I have with the Bamboo Lab. I've used the two Ultimakers for multicolor signs for years. It's definitely a convenience. But nothing prepared me for the boost in visual fidelity that printing models in colors can have. Take a look at this rocket in gray. It's nice enough, but printed in color, and it becomes a showpiece. I mean, look at the difference between these two. It's astonishing. My first really ambitious print was the Dalek. I didn't dry the filament and ran into some filament separation. Even so, the model turned out amazingly well, especially when viewed on a shelf. Here's a comparison between it and one I printed some years back in just plain gray filament. But then Sunlu provided me with their cherrywood, maple, and matte green filament. I added a spool of basic black I had on the shelf. And the result was this absolutely stunning Grogu Baby Yoda print. It is just incredible. <laughs> I've been really struggling with how to answer that. I'll break it down for you. Now that I have it working, the quality of output and the overall feature set for under $300 is astounding. You get four colors, a filament dryer, and a printable capable of, of incredible quality output. I do not like how much space this one printer takes up. Like the much more expensive Bamboo A1, this takes up the footprint of two printers. I much prefer the form factor of the top-mounted color filament modules given that I have limited space. And then there's the elephant in the room. It took much longer than it should have to get this thing working. I had to do major surgery not once, but twice. I had to buy some of my replacement parts because the company was unresponsive. The product shipped a half year before the slicer was ready, and that was only because the company refused to use the open source slicer they based their hack slicer on top of. So my answer has to be that this is an excellent printer when it works. If you're on a budget and want the best price performance printer out there and are willing to go through some unpredictable amount of hassle to make it all work, it is a fine machine. But if you just want to turn it on and use it, or if doing field surgery at the motherboard level is daunting, then stay away. It is a brilliant device with an unbeatable price performance ratio, but the company did not take enough time to QA the thing, either in hardware or software. It was rushed, and it is clear it was rushed. But there's the price, and it's only going to get cheaper. Once working, you can't beat what this has in it for the money spent. What do you think? Is this a printer you'd like to use? Let us know in the comments below. My name is David Gewertz. Go out there and make it awesome. <laughs>